A 19-year-old Sri Lankan man believed to be in Canada as a student is facing six first-degree murder charges. I'm going to detain you under Section 1 of the Police Criminal Evidence Act, OK? The reason for that is there's a lot of burglars in this area, and I've just seen you walk... You can. Just keep your hands out your pockets for now. I'll take, I'll take it and have a look in a minute, all right? The reason is there's a lot of burglaries in this area, OK? It's half one in the morning. I don't know who you are. You've probably got a totally legitimate excuse, all right? But at the moment, you're walking down the road with a duffel bag, all right, which I, which I believe may have stuff going to equip to do a burglary, all right? So I'm just going to search you. this pocket, I've got my ID. Perfect, OK, that's fine. Don't, don't put your hands in your pockets. Hey, hello, don't put your hands in your pockets, OK? You okay? You're just going to be searched, mate. You're not under arrest. I just need to search okay. you. You okay? Just nervous. All right. Just a bit nervous, yeah? Okay. Are they expecting you home? Okay. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Do you want me to hold that? Sorry, are you not in trouble? Are you not in trouble? Uh, so my, my colleague's just explained. Uh, he was just quickly search you, see if you've got anything, and then you're going to be gone. This has all been recorded on body camera, okay? You're not in trouble. My colleague's just... I'm I'm going to confess, okay. Yeah. In that bag um is uh non medical uh cannabis. Okay. okay. How much have you got in there? I've got maybe three or so uh, okay. okay, all right. Okay. I'm still gonna have to search you, all right. Yeah. So just pass me your phone and your mask, okay. All my concern is at the moment is if you've got anything on that's gonna hurt me or you, any needles, any razor blades, anything like that. Okay, fine. Because you just told me you've got drugs on you, I'm just gonna have to put you in handcuffs while I search you. The okay. reason, what's the matter? So the reason for that is, people try and do silly things when we search them. They try and hurt themselves, they try and hurt police officers. Hey, All right. can you take me into the car, please? Why? Don't resist. Listen to me very carefully. I know, I know. Don't resist. Okay, we'll put you in the car, but put the yeah, in first, yeah? OK. Is it someone's watching us? Or? Look, and take, take the bag, please. Thank you. Why do you want us to sit you in the car? Just worried, please. Why? Why are you worried? Just... You think your parents might see? No. Um. Right, get in the car, mate. Control, could I create a CAD for a, uh, a stop of a person on London Road, junction with Pollard's Hill North, please? Don't put your hands in your pockets. Don't do that again. Do you understand? Do you understand? That's the third time you've done that, and I've told you not to. Next time, listen to me, next time you're going to be handcuffed to the back. All right? Three times I've asked you. You speak perfectly good English. Stop doing it. It's for our safety as well, because we don't know if you're reaching for a knife. We don't know what you're reaching in for your pocket. Inside is my... If you open Received. It, you'll see my ID, which has my address. At the moment, I've tried to do you a favour by taking okay. off the street. You've not told me why. I'm just saving you a little bit of embarrassment. Now you've okay, reached I, into... I, I, stop I'm talking. You've now reached into your pockets three times and I've told you not to, right? You've now told me you've got drugs on you when I thought you might have had some sort of tool on you to burgle someone's house. Okay. So now I'm going to search you stood right here, all right? Because I don't know what else you've got on you and I think there's more to this story than you're letting on, despite having drugs on you, all right? Okay, so I asked you earlier, I'm not, I'm not too sure what the answer was. Have you got anything on you, like, sharp that can hurt me or you? No. No? Can you see what it is? It's not Oh, oh. Right, at the moment, right. I'm placing you under arrest okay. for possession of what I believe to be bullets, alright?
Guy a van and cell space for one man adult arrested for possession of what I believe to be bullets on London Road, junction with Pollard Hill North. Right. Good evening, officer. 1567. Search the back of him. Hey, Ryan, you've got a cell scar back with me, look. Just say receive for me. You receive. You receive. Just hold his jacket up for me. So, we'll change into a handcuff to rear. Yeah, definitely. You got one pair of trousers on? I have a second pair of thermals. Right, okay. Okay, I'm just going to search your inside leg. Spread your legs slightly for me, thank you. Where'd you get the boots from? Yeah, all good. A pleasant neighborhood in Ottawa, Canada became the stage for a horrifying tragedy on March 6, 2024. This was the day when the tranquility of a suburban home was shattered by an act of violence that sent shockwaves through the nation. The victims, a family of Sri Lankan immigrants, the Wickramasinghes, and their friend, found themselves caught in a nightmare that defied comprehension. The family matriarch, Darshani Dilantika Ekanyake, her four young children, and their friend, Amarakun Mudiyansa Lage Gamini Amarakun, were the lives cruelly snuffed out that fateful day. The father, though injured, was the lone survivor of this ordeal. The alleged perpetrator, a 19-year-old Sri Lankan student named Fabrio de Zoisa, was apprehended by the Ottawa Police Service Homicide Unit. De Zoisa, a former Algonquin college student was living with the family at the time of the incident. He was subsequently charged with six counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. This horrifying incident marked one of the most violent episodes in Ottawa's history, leaving a community in mourning and a nation in shock. The tranquility of the Barhaven home once filled with the innocent laughter of children was replaced with an eerie silence that echoed the magnitude of the loss. This was a tragedy that rocked not just Ottawa, but the entire nation of Canada. The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, expressed his shock and sorrow over the incident, emphasizing the need for community support and a thorough police investigation. The impact of the incident was such that it prompted a rare mass condemnation of violence from the country's top leadership. As we unravel the details of this heart-wrenching story, we can only hope to shed light on the circumstances that led to this devastating event. Let's not forget, behind every headline, every news report, there are real people, real lives that have been irreversibly changed. In the following scenes, we delve into the details of this tragic event. The man behind the mask, the alleged murderer, was a 19-year-old former Algonquin college student named Febrio de Zoisa. This unassuming young man who once walked the halls of a respected educational institution stands accused of the heinous crime that has sent shockwaves throughout Ottawa and beyond. De Zoisa, originally from Sri Lanka, was living with the Wickramasinghe family at the time of the incident. The reason behind his stay and the nature of his relationship with the family remain unclear. Was it a case of a family extending their kindness to a fellow countryman in a foreign land, or was there a deeper connection? As we dig deeper into his past, the details remain as elusive as the motive behind this horrific act. What we do know is that on the fateful night of March 6, 2024, De Zoisa allegedly turned from a quiet houseguest into a ruthless killer. 
Emergency responders arrived at the Bar Haven home shortly before 11 in the evening, only to find a crime scene that would haunt even the most seasoned among them. In the aftermath of the tragedy, De Zoysa was arrested by the Ottawa Police Service Homicide Unit. He was charged with six counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. Among those he stands accused of killing are four innocent children, their mother and a family friend. The father, the sole survivor, was left injured, grappling with an unimaginable loss. The arrest of De Zoysa was met with shock from those who knew him. Friends and acquaintances struggled to reconcile the image of the young man they knew with the chilling crimes he is alleged to have committed. But the reality remains that De Zoysa, once just another face in the crowd, is now at the center of one of the most high-profile criminal investigations in recent Canadian history. De Zoysa, a seemingly normal teenager, now stands accused of one of the most violent crimes in Ottawa's history. As the city reels from the tragedy, the question remains, what could have driven this young man to commit such an unthinkable act? The quiet Barhaven home of the Wickramasinghe family turned into a horrifying crime scene on that fateful night. In the quiet neighborhood of Barhaven, a tranquil family home transformed into a chilling tableau of unspeakable horror. The home, once filled with the laughter of four young children, was now the backdrop for an event that would send shockwaves through not just Ottawa, but the entire nation. On March 6, 2024, emergency responders arrived at the scene shortly before 11 in the evening, stepping into a shocking scenario that would haunt their memories for years to come. The Wickramasinghe family, recent immigrants from Sri Lanka, had been cruelly attacked in their own home. Four innocent children, their mother and a family friend, had been brutally stabbed, their lives abruptly and tragically cut short. The father, the sole survivor of this unthinkable attack, was found severely injured amidst the horrifying scene. As he fought for his life, he bore witness to the devastating loss of his family and friend. The police investigation revealed a chilling sequence of events. The perpetrator, 19-year-old Fabrio de Zoysa had been living with the family. De Zoysa, a former Algonquin college student, seemingly turned on those who had welcomed him into their home, launching a merciless attack that would end in the worst mass killing in recent Ottawa history. The police found no prior interactions between de Zoysa and law enforcement, and no previous signs of animosity or conflict between him and the Wickramasinghe family. The motive for this brutal act remained a mystery, adding an additional layer of terror and confusion to an already heartbreaking event. The crime scene was a stark reminder of the brutality of the attack. The remnants of a family's life were scattered amidst the horrifying evidence of their violent end. A home that once echoed with the sounds of a bustling family was now eerily silent, its walls bearing the scars of a nightmarish event. The brutal attack left an indelible mark on the community, forever changing the lives of those involved. The shock and sorrow that gripped Ottawa in the aftermath of the tragedy was palpable. The city, known for its peace and tranquility, was shaken to its core by this horrific event. The brutal act that left six people dead, including four innocent children, sent waves of disbelief and grief throughout the Canadian capital. The mayor of Ottawa, a figure usually associated with the city's mundane matters, found himself addressing one of the darkest chapters in Ottawa's history. His voice broke as he called it one of the most violent incidents the city has ever witnessed. The pain evident in his words, echoing the heartbreak felt by the entire community. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau expressed his shock and sorrow over the incident. He condemned the violence emphasizing the need for community support and a thorough police investigation. His words served as a grim reminder of the rarity of such mass killings in Canada, especially when compared to its neighbor to the south, the United States. The community, too, rallied together in their grief. Neighbors, friends, and even strangers turned to each other for support. They shared stories, tears, and held each other close. 
Their collective sorrow a testament to the close-knit community that Ottawa prides itself on being. A memorial was established in Palmadeo Park, near the scene of the tragedy. It began with a single bouquet of flowers, a silent tribute to the lives lost. But soon, it grew. More flowers, candles, handwritten notes and stuffed toys, each item a symbol of love and remembrance for the victims. The memorial became a place for the community to come together, to mourn, and to find some semblance of solace amidst the heartache. In the face of such an unthinkable tragedy, the citizens of Ottawa stood strong. They came together to support each other, to grieve, and to remember the lives that were so cruelly taken. The city was shrouded in a heavy cloud of sorrow, but through it all, the spirit of unity and resilience shone through. The city mourned as one, united in grief and disbelief. As the city grieved, the Ottawa Police Service Homicide Unit launched a full-scale investigation. The aim, to piece together the shocking events of that fateful night in March 2024, and to bring to justice the person responsible for the worst mass killing in recent Ottawa history. The main suspect, a 19-year-old Sri Lankan student named Febrio de Zoisa, was arrested swiftly after the incident. De Zoisa, a former student of Algonquin College, had been living with the Wickramasinghe family at the time of the tragedy. The charges against him were severe. Six counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. Despite the evidence stacked against him, the motive behind his alleged actions remains unclear. The homicide unit worked tirelessly, combing through every detail of the crime scene, gathering evidence, and conducting interviews. They sought to form a comprehensive picture of the events leading up to the horrific incident. The painstaking process of forensic and ballistic analysis was set into motion, each piece of evidence another step towards understanding the tragic puzzle. The Ottawa police also called upon the public for help. In a city rocked by the tragedy, they urged anyone with information or relevant footage to come forward. They believed that even the smallest piece of information could be crucial in the investigation. The community responded with many residents offering their assistance, a testament to the city's resilience and unity in the face of such a devastating event. The investigation is still ongoing, a complex and meticulous process. The police and prosecution are working to ensure a fair trial. On balance, I accept that you are likely to find prison more difficult than a neurotypical prisoner. I take that into account. Your injuries. After shooting Sergeant Matt Rattner twice, you fired two more shots. One hit the wall of the cell, mercifully missing the two officers who were bravely restraining you. The fourth hit you in the neck. This resulted in bleeding and a blood clot, which travelled to your brain and has caused some damage. It has also resulted in physical problems. It means you now use a wheelchair, and you have real problems with your communication, often using a whiteboard to help you communicate. It is entirely due to your deliberate and voluntary actions that you have those injuries but I have regard to the impact of imprisonment on you in the light of the totality of your injuries. I am satisfied that adequate treatment can be provided in custody. Even so, I recognise that custody is likely to be more difficult, both because of your injuries and because of your autism. That is a significant factor to consider when deciding whether to impose a whole life order. The aggravating effect of your use of a gun and the planning and premeditation outweigh the mitigating effects of your personal mitigation, including the impact of custody. There is therefore no justification to depart from the starting point of a whole life order. That is what Parliament has decided should normally apply as a starting point to the murder of a police officer in the execution of their duty. The seriousness of the offence means that a minimum term order is not justified. A whole life order must be imposed. Louis de Zoyza, I sentence you to imprisonment for life 
I impose a whole life order. That means you will remain in custody for the rest of your life. You may now be taken from the dock. One that will hopefully bring closure to a city still in mourning and justice for the victims of this terrible crime. As the city awaits justice, we are reminded of the fragility of life and the darkness that can lurk in the most unexpected places. As we follow the developments in this case, let us not forget the victims, the Wickramasinghe family and the sixth man, Gamani Amarakun, whose lives were tragically cut short. Their memory lives on, a poignant reminder of a tragedy that has left an indelible mark on the city of Ottawa.